I am so excited to be here today with the cast of Lesby Kings. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. So, Mikey, would you like to introduce yes, yourself and tell us a little bit about what Lesby Kings is? Sure, sure. Hey, hey, everybody out there. Small Town Pride Live. This is Mikey Likes It coming at you with my crew, my boys. Yeah. Uh, Lesby Kings. We're about creating, you know, safe space, happy space. We're about um, elevating and celebrating queer woman culture, as well as drag, all things drag. And we really like to bring out our positive masculinity as our creative selves and really put on a good show. That's really what we're about. That's awesome. Do you know how long has Lesby Kings been putting on shows? Actually, you know what? This just might be our like one year anniversary as we debuted in May last year uh, to a pretty damn well sold out house. And uh, it was a lot of fun. So I think we're about one year old. Yeah, that is awesome. And it looks like you've built quite a crew of kings it, just being one year old. So tell me, what, what does a, a Lesby Kings show look like? What can I expect to see? You can expect to see a lot of the same things that you see at a regular drag show uh, with a little bit of a twist. So we do lip syncs, we do have some singers, we have some queens that perform with us, um, mm -hmm. but you can expect to get a lot of handouts, a lot of swag. We like to give gifts. Um, we like to tip our audience back with candy and clappers and other swag that we get off of Oriental Trading Company. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, wow. And you can expect to see a lot of people excited in the audience. People get really jazzed for King shows, and I think it's because they're not expecting to be as entertained or turned on as they are. And it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. a good time. Absolutely. So and did you want to introduce yourself for the folks watching at home? Yeah, I'm Nocturnal Ignition. Uh, I am the pansexual switch daddy of the group. Excellent. So tell me, what is your definition of a drag king? And how does that differ from other sorts of drag entertainment that people might be familiar with? Uh, so and if you want to introduce yourself too, Sid. Hey, how you doing? Uh, this is Sid. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm dad with this young group here, old man here. Uh, so yeah, uh, back to your mm -hmm. question. King, king, uh, drag kings uh, back, 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 back um, in history. Hi. Uh, <laughs> there were uh, male impersonators. So like, you know, drag king history is really evolved. Uh, it may not be on the forefront currently, but it's definitely something that's always existed. It's always been there. Uh, and we just want to bring it back to light in a positive way. Uh, with our group of folks mm -hmm. here um, from Idaho. <laughs> we want to we wanna kind of reach out a little bit though too um, with some of the stuff we're doing just because, you know, a lot of us grew up being uh, tomboys or being, you mm -hmm. know, um, in situations growing up where like if you weren't feminine enough, you know, you couldn't really feel confident, you couldn't feel proud. And I know that, you know, the drag community in general, putting on face and getting out there mm -hmm. and expressing yourself and, 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 you know, gender expression in general, uh, a lot of focus is on femininity and there's not enough role models for all those baby butches out there, you know? I was a yeah. baby butch and, and I'd look around and, you know, gym teachers and, you know, come on, like, you don't wanna grow up and feel like you're not a sexy, confident fucking person, right? Excuse my language. Uh, but that's, that's what we're about. We're here, uh, we're, we're expressing our masculinity, we're bringing, you know, some positive side mm -hmm. to um, the queer community in a, in a little bit of a different spin, but, you know, we definitely, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's not that different. It's just that, you absolutely, know. and yeah. it's it's what what I've seen a lot is that a lot of drag shows or perceptions of what drag shows are and can be are sort of limited to what we see represented on television. So, what is it like, sort of performing masculinity and sort of playing with that concept when so much of popular drag is playing with femininity? I'm gonna hand this to someone, but I'm, I'm personally, I'm gonna say it's therapy. For me, it's therapy. Mm -hmm. I get up there, I grew up, I had to put on dresses, make everyone else happy. I put this shit on and I feel good. I like myself, I'm confident, I'm sexy, and, and that's why I do it. But uh, Cash Baby here might wanna, might wanna throw in some. Mm -hmm. there you go. And if you wanna introduce yourself yeah. too, Clint. No. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Clint Cash Baby. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it is. Um, can you give me the question? Yeah, so what is it like uh, exploring yes. masculinity uh, in drag performance? I really enjoy uh, being able to take the things that people ridiculed me for for my entire life and kind of, it feels like instead of hiding this part of myself, I am bringing it to the forefront and like performing and it feels really good. And uh, my first, my very first performance was based on the idea of consent mm -hmm. because I've had men do bad things to me. And so being able to be a man and be like stress the importance of consent was really powerful for me and I loved it and keep going. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing. So uh, a lot of people wanna get into drag as an art form generally. So how, how do kings here in our community uh, sort of get started, and how did some of you get your start uh, performing as drag kings? I'm gonna say something real quick. Uh, I got my start doing the Virgin Show with Penelope last year, and it was fantastic. It's amazing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd say, um, hey, if you're in the Treasure Valley area or Idaho in general, um, we want to meet you. And um, first of all, you know, reach out, reach out to uh, if there are is there is if there is a drag community around you, ask ask them for help or or come or or just come dressed up to a show. You don't even have to be a performer to do drag. In fact, some of the better, best, or whatever looks, some of the fiercest looks out there are just audience members mm -hmm. having a ball, coming to support, coming to express themselves. Um, but if you want to check us out here soon, um, we will be launching lesbikings.com. Ooh. And uh, we hope to be a resource for education, workshops, advice, w queer women culture, um, and just, again, ele elevating and celebrating positive masculinity. That's awesome. Um, Lesbikings.com or Facebook or Instagram, Lesbikings, and that's one word, L-E-Z-B-E, Lesby Kings. <laughs> that's awesome. I can't yeah. wait to see the, the website coming out. So how do you sort of make sense or navigate the broader drag culture, either as a national or global art form, or locally uh, as kings in what a lot of people might call a, a sort of queen-dominated art form? Yeah, so obviously um, a lot of what people think of as drag is RuPaul's Drag Race, right? Mm -hmm. um, we do have our, our king, Landon Sider, who was represented in winning Dragula and a non-binary drag performer mm -hmm. on there as well, Hollow Eve. Um, and so I think there's a little bit more awareness, but still when I go to a drag show, when I see a king, I'm like, like delighted and surprised. Um, but as a performer, at least in the Boise community, I have been embraced by the queens. And um, even a little bit as a curiosity, like what do you put in your pants and wh what do you do with your breasts? And, you know, uh, Those but, are like the opposite directions that right. we usually want to go. <laughs> yeah, but then, you know, they see us perform and they're like, let's do duets. Oh, you're so hot, you're so amazing, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of fun because we, fan, we fangirl on each other. Um, but uh, as far as making people outside of the drag community more of aware of drag kings. I think that needs to come from audience members. That needs to come from you guys asking for drag kings, supporting drag kings, going to shows where they're kings, um, pushing places. Yeah, give us money. We love money. Um, we don't have a lot of it. Um, mm -hmm. Encouraging those TV shows to represent uh, performers that were born in female bodies. Awesome. So. Uh, <clears throat> what are some other things that you want people to know about drag kings? Maybe clear up some misconceptions or uh, just educate. I'll say something real quick before I pass it on. Um, I have heard somebody say, it must be so much easier for you because all you do is put on a sports mm -hmm. bra and some pants. Um, right now, I just want to know, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let you know, um, my nipples are right here um, because I, I taped my breasts under my armpits. 
Uh, when I take that tape off later, I'm probably going to like pull off some armpit skin. That usually happens. Uh, I'm wearing four pairs of underwear, Spanx, um, a muscle suit made of foam in addition to my costume. This is not my real skin. These are not my real abs, unfortunately. Um, so it's we, we work hard. Uh, all of that very very true um uh here and actually just for one second i just want to bring in our brother willie munster get on in here brother get on in here brother right here right here right here um, another one they're multiplying you. yeah <laughs> good to see you do you mind kneeling a little bit can you hear you <laughs> nice nice um i would say a misconception or a, is there something to embrace uh, as we all evolve through our queerness and uh through in our community is um Recognize that when a king is in drag, we are m now we are most likely a he, him. Our pronouns mean something to us. It means something to our character. Mm -hmm. Means something to our identity um, it, as that perform as that performance art, um, and also as a vulnerable part of ourselves that we're sharing with you. Um, so please, you know, as we continue to take into account everyone's personal preference and whatnot, I encourage anyone in the entertainment and drag industry, uh, as well as, of course, our audience and, and uh, artists amongst each other, please, we, we be he's, we be him's. Sometimes, Sometimes you introduce us on stage yeah. as she. Mm -mm. Ain't cool, bro. Nope. <laughs> Ain't cool, bro. That's, that's one thing, that's one thing, but much love, so much love. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Sid. Hey, did you? What did you have, I just Dad? wanted to grab the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Sid loves attention. I kind of do. So I'm trying I to guess share. While you have the microphone, uh, how long have you been doing drag? Uh, I've been doing drag for six years. Mm -hmm. So why did you start, and why do you continue to do drag? Because <laughs> I come from a small town. Uh, honestly, they were putting on a show, a drag show, mm -hmm. and I, and I was like, but what about what about you know drag kings? And then they're like, we don't have any. And so I said, I'll do it. So uh, my first time, actually, I'm I'm a bigger gal, got some some bun abundance to my figure, if you will. <laughs> so uh, I had to learn pretty quickly. Um, but I decided, you know, being a shyish person, if you can imagine. Uh, I'm pretty shy. So, um, so anyway, uh, so I figured, you know, again, back to mm -hmm. the part, it, it, I, I got in my chonies, and uh, my first show, uh, I just made sure that I was, like, all out there. And, you know, on, honestly, mm -hmm. uh, I was super shy. I'd never been in front of a stage, never been in front of a crowd, never been anyone like that. And so I decided I'd just go um, full on. And, uh, yeah, ever since then, it, I've been hooked. So I love it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Did anybody else want to like give some input about why they started drag or why they continue to perform mm -hmm. as a drag artist? Maybe. I'll do it. Me a little bit. There we go. Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and if I you want to introduce yourself as well. <laughs> I'm Van Arkey, and uh, the thing about stage is there's so many elements to it. Before I got into drag, um, I was doing burlesque, which was a great expression of femininity but does not leave a lot when it comes to this. Drag was a really great way to get into the positive masculinity and a great way to portray a little bit more of a powerful and raw emotion that wasn't just subjugated to something being pretty for all intents and purposes. So it's a really nice way that we get to really hone in not only pieces of our artistic self that are on that more raw edged feel, but it really allows us a well, a stage, if you will, mm -hmm. to really portray those emotions as well in a really healthy environment. Awesome. Sure. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mikey. Cool. Uh, right here, um, I've got a button, which is actually the first, small. it was a very small town pride in Southern Oregon, in Ashland, Oregon, uh, 2017, right here. And this is uh, Southern Oregon University here, pride button. And, uh, that's where Mikey Likes It was born. Um, shout out to Ashland, Oregon. I'll be sharing this with you. Um, and uh, shout out to Kelly Green. Shout out to Alex Yuin of the Mama's Boys down in Oakland. Um, I miss you, brothers. And uh, we threw a great show. That was an amazing show. And that is actually, it was a small town pride where Mikey was born in 2017 in Ashland, Oregon. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, shout out to small town prides everywhere. So when you are on stage, 
uh, and you are sort of inter performing or interacting with an art audience before or after a Lesby King's show, what kind of audience has come to the shows that you've put on? <laughs> Middle-aged women. Yes. <laughs> Middle-aged women. women. Yep. Yes. Are, that's our bread and butter. Middle yeah. <laughs> as uh, <laughs> as Dad <laughs> said, is over here saying middle-aged women. They love us. Um, in addition to that, we them. yeah, we love them. We we love everyone. Uh, lesbians, obviously. The thing that's most surprised me is that um, there is a collective of gay men who are very confused by us. Um, <laughs> And uh, they, yeah, slash turned on, slash just even more confused. Um, <laughs> but it's, and the queens too, the queens come to our yeah. shows mm -hmm. and cheer us on. And, um, and I think, yeah, I've never seen so many lesbians in our local gay bar as at a king show. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, usually we're making up about like 10% in the corner drinking PBR and then there's <laughs> like, and then there's just like all of these gay men who we love, they're our friends. Um, but uh, having, you know, having that representation even in our little club is kind of awesome. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. So what are some of your goals? And anyone feel free to chime in. What are some of your goals for the next five years or so for Lesby Kings? move over RuPaul and Boulay Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, long term, we're talking, you know, whatever. It is It is definitely something that that we b talked about, but also um, I know that, you know, putting on more shows, doing some workshops, reaching out uh, to other kings in other areas, um, networking, working with kings from small town prides especially, mm -hmm. um, because I think that, you know, having some diversity in some of our shows would be really, really awesome. Um, and then I know that, like, a couple of you guys in other faucets have some other stuff and I just took the microphone again didn't I Jeez. <laughs> hold on Mikey wants to talk <laughs> Look out for Lesby Kings on tour. Ooh, a tour coming. Soon coming to a small town near you. Ooh. Ah. Any more details you can share about that? Or uh, is it all Just some uh, general intermountain pleasure cruises and, uh, you know, some weekend trips and maybe even a bus back and forth and we can uh, bring, some, bring some people to and fro. Ooh. Our town, their town, you know what I'm saying? I cannot wait to hear more about that. Sign me up. So... What advice would you give to a young queer person or a queer person in one of the small towns who's watching now, who's interested in exploring uh, drag performance as an art form, especially as a drag king? Uh, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Um, even if you're like, oh, I don't know how to perform and I've never done anything like this before. I don't know how to do mm -hmm. makeup. Do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And you'll get better and it'll be so fun and you will regret it if you don't do it. So you should. Uh, I'm going to peer pressure you personally <laughs> into doing it. Uh, I like consensually, because that's important still, but like <laughs> do, do it. Do um, it. Do you want? Yeah. Um, yeah, both for both for the young queer people and for the people like me who were, you know, like 30 and wanted to start exploring their queerness more uh, and didn't know how to do that. For anyone who's interested in starting drag, reach out to somebody who does drag. If you don't know anyone who does drag in your area, shout, shout out to us. Shout out to somebody mm -hmm. that you follow on Instagram. Um, I, I have reached out to other kings on Instagram like just like thinking there's no way they're gonna reply to my DM and saying how did you make that wig and then they're like get on Skype we'll make a wig together like people are super cool um, so just reach out that's awesome so oh Sorry. yes Clint I just there's a drag king in Australia that I love and I reached out to him via DM on Instagram and he responded so like literally just reach out to people and talk is that to them. Hugo it is Hugo girl Hugo. shout out to Hugo <laughs> Awesome. So uh, sort of keeping in that vein, how can people watching right now uh, contact Lesby Kings if they want to share ideas, get input, anything like that? Yeah, all the things, all the things. Lesby Kings, um, L-E-Z-B-E Kings, Lesby Kings, because we all want to be kings. Lesby Kings together. Let's be kings together. <laughs> and um, Instagram, Facebook, and c seriously, coming soon where you're going to get private gallery. R right now, we've got private galleries of kings and, uh, and our content on lesbikings.com. So that's a good way to check it out. Check it out. Awesome. 
did anybody else have any sort of input or advice or anything that they want to uh, say about being a king? And if you want to introduce yourself, too. Yeah, I'm Gunnar Packwood. Um, I just started uh, dabbling in drag thanks to my daddy, Mikey, here. Uh, last October, I think it was, yep. we did the Blues Brothers, which was super fun. But uh, again, kind of touching on if you want to get started and have never done it before, uh, it's a very liberating feeling to just be that vulnerable and to just reveal this super important but also mostly hidden for women aspect of ourselves that is completely innate and inherent and just a part of us. So be brave, don't be afraid of it, and embrace it. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here at Small Town Pride today. Happy Pride to all of you. Thank you. Happy Pride, everybody. Yeah.